Hello world! Today's video is going to be a little bit different because I'll be answering one of your most frequently asked questions related to Bluetooth Low Energy. So I keep on getting a lot of questions related to the videos that I've already created on this channel. So I have decided to create a series of videos wherein in each video I'll be answering one of your most frequently asked questions. So this video is going to cover one such question which is related to roles in Bluetooth Low Energy. And uh, make sure that you have subscribed to the channel because you may not want to miss out on this series. I'll be creating a playlist out of this series. So make sure you have subscribed to the channel because basically these are your questions which I'm going to answer. And with that said, let's begin with our first question. So the question is, is it compulsory for the GAP central to be a GAT client and GAP peripheral to be a GAT server? Or are the roles interchangeable? That is, is it possible for a GAP central to be a GAT server and GAP peripheral to be a GAT client? So first of all, let's understand the fundamental difference between GAT and GAP profiles. GAP deals with device discovery and connection. It takes care of the lower level interaction between the devices. And GAT deals with the exchange of data between them. If you want to know the specific details of GAT and GAP and all the other layers of the BLE protocol stack, then I highly recommend you to watch two videos on this channel. The links for both of them are in the description below. So these videos will help you immensely in setting up a solid base in this subject. Anyway, coming back to this one, central and peripheral are GAP roles and client and server are GAT roles. Now let us look at the definition of each of these roles. When the device is in the central role, it scans or listens for advertisements. However, unlike an observer, it can interact with any station. It initiates the connection process and can include multiple peripherals or peers on the network. Next, we have the role of peripheral. In this role, the device is responsible for sending out the advertising packets. The central, as we have seen earlier, scans for advertisements and sends out a connection request if it is, say, interested in forming a connection. And the peripheral can accept or reject this request. And if it, say, accepts the request, then a connection is formed between the central and the peripheral device. Now, if you're confused about the various terms which are used for different roles in BLE, then let us quickly understand the differences between each one of them. Gap central is nothing but master at link layer level, and gap peripheral is nothing but slave at link layer, and gap broadcaster is an advertiser at link layer, and gap observer is nothing but a scanner at link layer level. Now, it is interesting to note that even the link layer master is capable of scanning for advertisements, that is, it performs the role of a scanner, but it is also capable of forming active connections, and that is what differentiates it from the scanner. So it is not merely a scanner, but it is also capable of forming connections, and this is the reason why it is known as master at link layer level. Similarly, the slave is capable of sending across advertisements, just like an advertiser, but it is also capable of forming active connections and is the reason why it is known as slave and not just an advertiser. So these are gap roles and their corresponding link layer roles. So now let us look at the GAT rules. Let us quickly look at the client role. When the device is operating in the client role, it asks or requests for data because that's what a client does, right? It usually asks for data and then obviously waits for a response. And in the GAT server role, the device provides the data, which means it serves and is the reason why it is known as server. Now, both the GAP and GAT roles are absolutely independent of each other. It means that a GAP central can be a GAT client or a GAT server or both and the same is true for GAP peripheral role as well. So this misconception that GAP central should only be a GAT client arises as frequently that is the case. However, let us look at an example and settle this misconception right away. Consider a smartphone paired with a smartwatch. 
Here, the watch is a gap peripheral and the phone is a gap central. After connection establishment, the phone can request data from the watch. It can say request for heart rate, temperature data which is collected by the sensors of the smartwatch. Thus, in this case, the phone is acting like a GAT client and the watch is obviously a GAT server. However, the watch can request the exact time for data timestamping and adopt the role of the GAT client. The phone will be nothing but GAT server in this case. Also, as a server, the phone can send across software updates to the watch. Thus, it is evident that the direction of data flow decides whether a particular device is a GAT client or a GAT server. But the GAP roles remain the same throughout the transaction. Thus, the smartwatch continues to be a GAP peripheral and the smartphone continues to be a GAP central, irrespective of the switch in the GAT roles during this particular transaction. So that is it for today. I'll be solving more such queries related to Bluetooth Low Energy in some of my upcoming videos. And you can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Also, comment down if you have more queries related to BLE. And as usual, like and share this video and hit the subscribe button for more such amazing content. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye world.